Paul was unable to change 1,500 years of tradition. Even though he received his information by revelation of Jesus Christ and often spoke in the power of the Spirit, he was unable to change the fact that starting 1,500 years before Christ, Moses had started to get revelation about water rituals and they had been completely entrenched into the, into the Jewish religion and then into the Christian church, especially in light of the baptisms of John and the baptisms of Jesus and what Jesus had taught his disciples. You know, Pentecost was revolutionary, Acts chapter 2, because the, the symbol of water baptism was finally replaced by the reality of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And Paul's, Re Paul's revelation was revolutionary because Paul now had the revelation that, guys, th this, this new thing, <laughs> this baptism in the Holy Spirit, that's what we need to be focusing on. And by the time Ephesians, the, uh, some, uh, the pinnacle of the church epistles written by Paul by revelation while he was in prison, in Ephesians chapter 4, Paul writes about the seven ones for the church, and in verse 5 he says, One Lord, one faith, one baptism. And Jesus Christ is crying out from heaven and giving this revelation to the Apostle Paul that there's one baptism for the church. One baptism for the church. And given the symbol of water or the reality of Holy Spirit, water that you can get water baptized and not even be saved, water that doesn't change you, water that doesn't give you any spiritual power, or baptism in Holy Spirit, which is done by Jesus Christ, makes you a new person in Christ, gets you saved, gives you spiritual power. That's the reality. That's the one baptism of Ephesians chapter 4. But the church manages to ignore both Pentecost and Paul. Now, it, it ignores Pentecost. The church today pretty much ignores Pentecost. How many churches can you walk in today where people use the terminology baptized in the Holy Spirit? How many churches can you walk into today where people understand baptism of the Holy Spirit? Some of the churches that even talk about baptism of the Holy Spirit don't really understand it and teach it as an experience that occurs sometimes many years after you're saved. So the church managed to ignore Pentecost. The church also managed to ignore Paul. And Paul had great statements when it came to faith, like in Corinthians 1, Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Paul's revelation should have changed the course of church history, but it didn't. But I want to make a, I, I want to take us to the word of God and I want us to read this for ourselves, line by line, Galatians 1, 11, and 12. Because, unfortunately, sometimes when I'm teaching this, what I hear, even from Christians, is, well, I know what Paul said, but Jesus, and somehow or other, the words of Paul are pitted against the words of Jesus. Now, we, we can't do that. We cannot do that and arrive at truth. If we look at Galatians chapter 1, verse 11, remember, this is the first epistle that, that the Apostle Paul wrote, writing it by revelation. This is the very first one. So Paul is laying the groundwork here. And in the first chapter of Galatians, by Galatians 1, 11, I want you to know, brothers, so here it is, from Jesus' mouth to our ears, I want you to know that the gospel I preached is not something that man made up. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gave new information to the church via the Apostle Paul. He gave new information concerning the Jews and Gentiles being one body that he never straightened out himself. He gave new information about sacrifice. He gave new information about circumcision. He gave new information about what we can eat and what we can't eat. And he gave new information about baptism. And it's, it's amazing to me that the churches believe the stuff about, about sacrifice. I get it. I don't know any Christians that kill any animals. <laughs> Hunting, maybe, but I mean, you know what I'm talking about. I don't know any Christians that sacrifice. They get that message. I don't know any Gentile Christians that wouldn't eat with a Jewish Christian. And I don't know any Jewish Christians that wouldn't eat with a Gentile Christian, even though it was the revelation of Paul that straightened that out, not the teaching of Jesus. I, uh, 
You, you see where I'm going with this. But when it comes to baptism, all of a sudden, oh, that's what Paul said, but Jesus. No, Jesus said there's one baptism, and we've got to make a choice. It's either the, the symbol, water, or it's the reality, spirit. I think we should be able to conclude from the scripture that the one baptism for the church is baptism in Holy Spirit, which gets you saved and makes you a new creation in Christ. Unfortunately, tradition has been more important to most Christians than the written word of God. And, and the upshot of the whole thing was that the Apostle Paul was simply unable to reverse 1,500 years of tradition. I mean, if you, if you look at his life, you know, he, he started traveling. He did three missionary journeys, uh, and then he was imprisoned. And he spent two years in prison in Caesarea and then two years in prison in Rome. And then he was released for just a little while and then he was re-imprisoned. And during that time of imprisonment, remember that's before uh, Facebook and Twitter and, and the internet and all those things. You know, he just couldn't keep in contact with people and, and people uh, left the faith. He couldn't, he couldn't support the faith, uh, as simple as that. And interestingly enough, even though Paul had raised some pretty sound leaders like Timothy, there were reasons that, uh, that, that those guys were taken out. Remember, uh, if we look at why did tradition continue so strongly? Well, the Roman persecution of the Christian church, which started, um, it started in a big way with the fire of Rome in July of 64 AD uh, with Nero. And in, in the Roman persecution then that continued for the next, oh gosh, all, actually there was Roman persecution up until the Emperor Constantine in the 300s AD. So a lot of very, very strong church leaders were, were killed off. And that's what happens. That's kind of the nature of persecution. You know, it's easy to find the people who are standing the strongest, you know. Secondly, as I've alluded to before, most Christians at that time period couldn't read. So it was easier to do what Christ did than trust some document that may say something that you're not exactly sure what it said. And thirdly, again, especially during times of persecution, it's important to have a way of deciding who is in and who is out. And water baptism did that very nicely. If, if somebody could come and be an onlooker, if you think of the Roman world and Roman persecution, and if a man could sit in front of a Roman judge and say, yes, judge, I, I went to a couple meetings, I, I looked to see what they were doing, but I, I never really made a commitment for Christ. I still have, am committed to the emperor, you know, and, and he could save himself from being tortured that way or being killed. Um, and so, but if somebody wanted to stand up and say, yes, I'm a Christian, I'm proud to be a Christian, I want to make a statement of faith, then they'd be water baptized. So water baptism was a, a great way of, of delineating cleanly who was in the faith and who was out of the faith, who'd made a commitment for Christ and who hadn't. Uh, at least it certainly made that delineation in the eyes of the people. And so water baptism then was a very, very strong tradition. And then became the tradition in the Christian church. And eventually, interestingly enough, eventually what happened when 580, in 586 BC when Nebuchadnezzar burned the temple and the emphasis went from sacrifice and baptism to baptism and then all the emphasis about baptism became more regulations, became more institutionalized, became more of a burden, that then repeated itself in the church. Because once the, once the church tradition of water baptism was firmly established and once the understanding of the Holy Spirit was lost and the power of the Holy Spirit was lost, which happened fairly early in the church, all of a sudden the, the farther along you go in church history, the more regulations there are about water baptism, the more burdensome those, uh, uh, those regulations became. And then as, even up, as you get up into the Middle Ages, Christians are even killing each other because, you know, you're not doing baptism right and they executed each other over the symbol. Oh, I can't even go there in my mind. It just, guys, we have got to focus on the reality, Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ gave us Holy Spirit from heaven. We all have spiritual power. Let's be blessed that we've been baptized by Holy Spirit and let's learn to walk 
in the power of the Spirit. God bless you.